What's growing on, gardeners? It's Tuesday, February 20th, here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, and on today's video, I'm going to share with you all exactly how much money I spent building my garden, how much you could expect if you're going to build your own garden in 2024, and I'm going to give you money-saving tips along the way, things that I learned when I was building my garden that I wish I didn't spend money on to save you some money. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. Over the last year or two, so many of you have told me how much you want to start a vegetable garden, but you've expressed to me with all the recent price hikes and inflation, it's just too expensive to have your own vegetable garden. And look, I understand that. Money is tight for a lot of people right now and things are a lot more expensive than they were just a mere two years or so ago. So what I did was I went through all of my old receipts and I collected all of my old data and I crunched the numbers, how much it cost me to build my whole vegetable garden and how much it would cost me to build basically the same thing again if I were to do that today. And I'm here to tell you, you may be surprised how affordable it could be if you do things the right way. So I'm going to share all of these tips with you and you can start to build your very own affordable vegetable garden. I'm going to break this video into two segments. The first segment is going to tell you exactly how much money I spent building my vegetable garden. After that, I'll tell you how much you can expect to pay in 2024 for a similar layout because obviously my garden's several years old, so it was a little bit cheaper to build back then. And I'll also tell you some things that I did that I think are probably a waste of money that I wouldn't do again to save you some cash in the long run. First things first, yard size. Many of you think that I have a very large yard, but in fact, it's actually a really standard residential plot. It's only a little bit larger than a quarter of an acre. It's 0.3 acres. It's just the wide angle lens makes everything look bigger than it really is. So this is a standard suburban plot in an HOA. I have a homeowners association. It's just a generic neighborhood. Second thing, many of you think that I have a large vegetable garden. Again, it's not, it's just camera tricks. The whole vegetable garden is 35 feet by 35 feet or 1,225 square feet. That only equates to 0 0.0281 acres when you do the math. And because it's a raised vegetable garden, roughly a third of that space is lost to the rows. So when you're talking about actual physical growing space, my whole vegetable garden is only 0 0.02 acres. That's really it. I moved into my house in September of 2018, and when I moved in, this was just a clear-cut property with really nothing in the backyard on basically Carolina beach sand. So I had to start my garden completely from scratch, and I hit the ground running immediately. Now, I did not simply build this entire garden as you see it right away. It would have cost me too much money, and it would have been way too much work. So I built it out in phases over years. So the first thing I did was I went out and I purchased lumber and I just built eight basic raised beds that were all four feet wide by 10 feet long. All of those raised beds were made out of two by eight pressure treated lumber. And in order to buy all of that lumber, it cost me $211.68. I went to the store and I picked it up myself in a pickup truck. I did not pay a delivery fee. Now, when I built all of those raised beds and assembled them and put them into place, I had to fill those raised beds. It would have been way too much money to buy bagged soil. So what I did was I looked up a local landscaping place that delivered a big triaxle tr dump truck load full of homemade turkey compost and it cost me $450 for an entire dump truck full of compost. It was 10 cubic yards and then I hand trucked all of that compost using a wheelbarrow and I filled up all of my raised beds. Now I overestimated I got way more than I needed and I wound up spreading a lot of that compost around my fruit tree areas that I would later expand around the perimeter of my yard with lots of fruit trees. So I did not use all of that compost in order to fill the raised beds but I will factor it into the cost nonetheless. So my first year cost to have those eight large raised beds cost me $661.68. Now, if you look back at old pictures in my garden, you'll see that I did have a very basic fence around my garden, but I didn't spend any money on that because I actually had old T posts and fencing left over from a trellis I built when I was renting. So I just repurposed old supplies. Obviously, if you had to buy those from scratch, you'd have to spend a little bit more money, but you probably have some basic things lying around your yard that you could repurpose like I did. 
After that first year gardening, I really wanted to expand my garden and truly have the garden of my dreams. So over the winter of 2019 to 2020, I had a massive garden expansion project. And that is when I put the perimeter beds all around my garden and I added things like trellising and real fencing and an actual gate to keep all of the mammal critters out. Now this is where I spent the bulk of my money. On that year, I bought all of the lumber that I needed for the perimeter beds as well as some additional beds to expand the center of my garden. Now all of that was made out of 2x8 pressure treated lumber of various lengths and I spent $757.19 and I had that delivered to my front yard from a local big box store so I paid the $50 delivery fee or whatever it was to have that lumber delivered. Then I got another triaxle dump load of 10 cubic yards of the same soil from the same people. That cost me $500, which I then manually hand trucked to all of the beds with a wheelbarrow yet again. So that was my really big expansion project. And to do all of that, it cost me $1,257.19 when you add all of the soil and all of the lumber together. Now in my massive garden expansion project, I did not just build raised beds. I also went way overkill and I bought these four by four by 10 foot long posts that I have every eight feet roughly in my garden because I wanted to have both a trellis system and fencing to keep all of the critters out. And this time I bought real fencing. So all of the four foot welded wire fence that I put around the perimeter of my yard cost me at the time $106.74. So when you factor in all of the raised beds that I built over the course of two years, all of the fencing around my yard and garden, and the four by four posts, as well as the concrete foundations that they are all embedded in, I spent a grand total of $2,025.61 all in to build my entire garden as you see it. Now that first year I built my garden, I was fighting weeds like crazy all in the aisles of my raised bed. So I decided to spring for weed barrier and I lined all of the rows of my garden with weed barrier. I also put a trellis system around my entire garden for me to grow my cucumbers, my melons, my indeterminate tomatoes around. So it cost me $74.02 for all of the weed barrier to line the aisles of my garden and another $41.94 and $44.78 for all of the cables and turnbuckles to apply tension to all of the lines to have my trellis system. So once year 2021 rolled around, I realized that my garden was pretty much self-sufficient. I had great fencing, I had great trellising, I was able to eliminate most of the weeds, but I still had one thing growing on that was driving me nuts. I was spending so much time irrigating my garden. So I bought a bunch of rain barrels and I installed drip irrigation to every single one of my beds. So the rain barrels that I purchased cost me $156.69 then I bought a whole bunch of mainline tubing, fittings, and connectors, and I ran drip irrigation from my rain barrels and my spigot up against the house to every single one of these raised beds in my entire garden. And I kind of underestimated how much stuff I needed, so I had to make two orders. One order was $266.57. The next one with additional parts to complete the design was $101.12. So that means my entire irrigation cost for all of the beds to the spigot, to my rain barrels, and the rain barrels themselves cost me $524.38. So to build my entire garden, soup to nuts, including all of the lumber, all of the compost, all of the fencing, all of the irrigation, including my rain barrel system, and all of the trellising cables that you see going around the entire garden came in at a grand total of $2,710.73. That is how much money I spent basically to the penny building my entire garden. Now at this point, many of you may be saying, thanks, you confirmed it for me. I can't afford to build a vegetable garden. I don't have $2,700 just lying around under my couch cushions. Well, neither did I. 
That's why I spent three entire years building this garden. There was no way I could afford to build everything I wanted all at once, and I didn't have the manpower to do it. I did all of this by myself. Nobody helped me turn a single screw, cut a single board, or move a single grain of dirt. I did all of this 100% on my own, but I paced myself. I did it as I could afford it, and I did it as I had the time. Because to build all of this in a single season, it would have killed me physically and financially. But when you space it out over three years, doing it at your leisure as a weekend war, or spending a Saturday here or there. It's not that bad and it's not that expensive. In fact, you may be shocked to know how affordable it will be to get started with a vegetable garden. Now what I did was I took my old receipts that showed what I paid for in lumber costs and I compared them to today's prices if I were to buy that exact same lumber from Lowe's, which is where I bought my lumber initially. It all came from Lowe's Home Improvement. So if you just want to start off with a basic vegetable garden and you want to build yourself four four foot by ten foot raised beds well that would mean that you need four two by eights that are eight feet long and eight two by eights that are ten feet long uh, the old prices were 744 and 951 each today they are 958 and 1198 each so Buying the stuff back in 2019, it would have cost $105.84. Today, it's $134.16 for a 26.8% increase. Now, that's a significant increase for only five years, but when you get right down to it, that's not that bad. To be able to start with four very large raised beds for $134, bucks, that's not expensive at all. The most expensive part of this is going to be filling the raised beds with soil. Now, if you were to go and just buy bags of soil from a big box store, it would absolutely kill your wallet. But if you actually call up a local landscaping place and you get truckloads of some kind of garden soil delivered, it's actually pretty affordable. So a four foot by 10 foot raised bed that's made out of two by eights is going to be about 0.9 cubic yards of soil required to fill each one. So if you have four raised beds, you'll need about 3.6 cubic yards of soil. Let's just round up the four just to make sure that you have enough. Well, that's roughly half a dump truck load. I was paying around $500 for an entire 10 cubic yard dump truck. If you're only getting four cubic yards, you'll probably pay half that, maybe even less. So if you're looking at about $250 for soil, $135 for the wood, you should be able to build yourself a pretty good sized raised bed garden with four large raised beds for only about $400 or so. So for about $400, you can easily get started with a pretty good sized raised bed garden. Most people starting out with four four foot by 10 foot raised beds are going to have plenty of room to get started in the beginning. And then every single year, you can just add what you want as the money becomes available. Or even if you have spare money every six months or every four months, whatever, just build it out as you have the funds available. Now I want to give you some money saving tips. For those of you that know me well by now, you know that I am an electrical engineer. As an engineer, I have a habit of over engineering and over designing everything. It's just kind of what we're taught to do. So as a result, there was lots of stuff that I spent money on that if I could do it all over again, I probably wouldn't do it again because it is in fact overkill. Now before I do that, let's just break it down to the raw stuff that we need to garden. We're going to exclude the drip irrigation we're going to exclude the weed barrier. We're just going to break it down to the raised beds, the compost that's used to fill the beds, and the fencing, because that's really all that we need to make a garden work. My lumber, compost, and fencing cost alone was $2,025.61. That's what it cost to build my entire garden in its raw form without any of the added accessories. If we assume that 26.8% increase across the board that we found for lumber, 2019 cost versus 2024 costs, the 2024 cost to build my garden is $2,567.61. One of the things that I did when I originally built my garden was I bought four by four by 10 foot posts because I really wanted to have a trellis and I wanted to make sure that they'd never go anywhere. So I embedded them about three feet deep into the ground and then filled all of those holes with concrete. So I spent hundreds of dollars on concrete. If I could do this all over again, honestly, I wouldn't have even bothered. It was hundreds of dollars of unnecessary cost and a ton of labor 
carrying around all those huge sacks of concrete, mixing them in a giant tote, and backfilling all of the holes. If I could do it all over again, I would just stick these posts into the ground with a post hole digger and just backfill with the native soil. And you know what? When they eventually rot, I'll be able to remove them more easily. They're, they're going to be really hard to pull out with all of that concrete. So I don't think that you need to spend the hundreds of dollars in concrete that I spent. So you can take that right off the top. I also think that many of you will not need the 10 foot posts. Most of you are probably going to wind up using six foot posts or eight foot posts. These are really overkill if you want to have a very large tall trellis like I did. But this isn't necessarily the only way to do it. You could get smaller posts and you could stick some kind of like an EMT conduit and strap it to it and run a trellis that way or use some other cheaper methods. I don't know if I would go with this tall a post again. So by foregoing the concrete, you can emit hundreds of dollars of cost and dozens of hours of labor. And that's really the biggest piece of advice that I could give you when it comes to building out your garden. Try and keep it simple and do it in steps. Don't try to do it all at once. You also can't look at gardening as spending money. It's more like investing money. It's like making a contribution into your 401k or your pension. It's money out of your paycheck right now, but it will pay dividends over the long term. You are not going to make back costs the first year, but around year three, year four, year five, things get easier and easier and more self-sufficient. You'll find yourself spending less and less money on things. And I'll tell you right now, I really don't even buy produce anymore aside from carrots and celery which I just can't grow all year round here it gets too hot in the summer so over time I've been able to save quite a bit of money directly into my groceries because I pretty much grow all of my own groceries for the most part and besides we don't just garden for the direct cost savings it's the indirect cost savings that are incalculable when it comes to growing your own food it teaches you to eat seasonally which is a revelation. It is amazing when you start eating things in season, how your taste buds will change and you'll recognize patterns of eating and you'll wind up thinking, I actually like different foods when it's cold out than when it's warm out. You will also get immeasurably better quality produce out of your garden than you will at grocery stores. You will find that things that you buy in the store, it's swill, it's tasteless, it's flavorless all the quality of food that you will eat from here on out will improve and you just can't put a dollar sign on that. The other benefit is think about how much additional exercise you will be getting. Think of all of the additional sunshine and UV rays that you will get. How much healthier you will become when you start exercising more, getting more fresh air, getting more sunshine, eating more seasonally, eating less processed foods from the grocery store. Yeah, you may spend a couple hundred dollars building your garden, but you may save thousands, tens of thousands of dollars in future healthcare costs. And how can you put a price tag on feeling better? There is no better blessing in life than not being in pain and feeling good. And I have to tell you, uh, I'm going on 40 years old and I probably don't quite look that old. And a lot of that is because of how much time I spend in the garden. I get so much sunshine, so much fresh air, so much exercise. It's really probably one of the reasons why I look a little young for my age. And that right there is how much money I spent building my vegetable garden with some helpful tips and tricks along the way, how you can save money and parse it out over a long period of time to build it as affordably as possible. Now, I didn't include every single little thing that I have in my vegetable garden, like the different covers and shade cloth and PVC hoops over my raised beds. All of those things are little accessories that I've added over the years because I found for a very small investment, I get huge returns by keeping pests out of my garden, by keeping the frost off, by keeping the sun off and having my plants be more productive and increase my growing season. So the more food I can get out of my garden, the less money I have to spend at the grocery store. So that's why I do it. But those things aren't really relevant to the cost of building a garden itself. Those are things that you can determine if you want to do down the road to save you some time. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please 
ring that notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos like these. If you have any questions about how I built my garden, or if you're curious about any of the things that I use in real life in my garden, I have all of those things linked down below in the video description of my Amazon storefront link. So expand the video description, click on the Amazon link, you'll see everything I use in real life. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. All right, Dale, it is the 15th of the month, and you know what that means? It is Heartworm Prevention Day. It is very important that every single pup out there get their heartworm preventative every single month because all you need to do to get a heartworm, which can be fatal, is to get bitten by a single mosquito, and the mosquitoes are going to start coming out soon. In fact, when we get little warm spells, sometimes they still come out right now during the winter. So here is your monthly heartworm preventative. Good boy. And just like that, Dale is good for another month. Really recommend these heartworm preventatives. Heartworms are so dangerous, they damage the heart for months and months and months, even if you're able to cure them. And then dogs can't play because their heart's under too much stress. It's really a terrible thing. So we wanna make sure that Dale is as protected as possible. We don't want him getting any fartworms, right? No fartworms.